Okay, Bruce, we're recording. And good uh, morning. Good morning. We're a little bit off schedule, but that's okay, you know. Um, <laughs> this is how does it make sense? I think number nine that we have here. Um, so, anyway, uh, we decided to take on uh, this Oscars, the Hollywood Oscars diversity requirements to talk about that uh, a little Perfect. bit since you and I represent so much diversity here. But anyway. Right. Um, and I mean, they put out kind of a long statement, but let me just kind of refresh uh, some of the salient points for the boys and girls out there, the thousands of boys and girls out there that listen to us. The Film Academy has established four broad representation categories on screen, among the crew, at the studios, and opportunities for training. Um, and for on screen, to meet the on screen representation, a film must either have at least one lead character or a significant supporting character be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. At least 30% of secondary roles must be from two underrepresented groups, and underrepresented groups they define as women, people of color, uh, LGBTQ, with a little plus mark after that. Uh, folks or people with disabilities. Um, and now when it gets into sort of the back room, at least two leadership positions or department heads be from underrepresented groups and at least one be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. At least six other crew members be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group or at least 30% of the crew, if you can keep up with that. And then the third and fourth categories deal with paid internships and apprenticeships and uh, people in like marketing and distribution departments and so forth. And they, and they give really no much more detail on that, but it's probably following some of those same ratios. So that's sort of the Monarch Notes version of it. And how does it strike you? If, if I remember correctly from the article, it's only the best picture Oscar they're gonna do this with, right? Um, the Oscars are, yes, for the Best Picture nominee, starting with the 96 Academy Awards in 2024. Okay. So, you know, I'm, uh, you know, first of all, I think a dog could be an upper underrepresented category. You know, we used to put dogs in commercials all the time because people love dogs. You know, it would just run across the screen. It would add nothing. Right. But in this case, um, all levity aside, the idea is not a bad one. To, you know, to, to kind of push diversity in a major industry, this is not something new. I mean, college admissions have done this. Um, you, you know, the NFL has interviewing processes now that required uh diverse candidate pools. These are not necessarily bad things, but the law of unintended consequences always comes into play. It just does. In this case, you're taking what is a very creative industry where the opportunity to make money or lose money is very rapid and very obvious. Um, and you're asking people to change the way they think in order to encourage diversity. If all these people in the entertainment industry are so liberal, this should be unnecessary to be perfectly honest. But the fact that it's not happening and they want to encourage it, I don't think is a bad thing, but I always worry about quotas because uh, you know, I'm a big believer in meritocracies, but you have to have your chance at bat to get a hit, you know, to use a baseball metaphor. If you're not getting your opportunities at the plate, you're never gonna get a hit. So while I loathe the idea of this on a purely, uh, What's the right word? Uh, uh, quota? 
Yeah, I, I just, I hate the idea of quotas as opposed to giving people opportunity. Now, if you can't encourage people to give opportunity without quotas, I guess I get it. But I also realize that, you know, it does in, in a creative industry feel like a form of censorship. Well, yeah, and that's kind of where I, I net out on this. It's sort of like this ideology without me being able to figure out who's behind the ideology. Um, I mean, you made a really good point. The creative world is exactly that. It's, it's creative. Um, and the moment you start giving, and we saw this in advertising, the moment you start giving um, creative folks a certain formula, all of a sudden the work can suffer itself because then they're following a formula as opposed to creating something that's going to resonate to the heart. Um, it also uh, sort of um, underestimates uh, the audiences out there that unless they have this in their face, they never will be able to have, to be able to understand uh, the value of, of different populations. And oftentimes there are so many stories and so many movies that come out from different minority um, you know, directors and so forth that have a, a cross audience appeal, you know? So I look at it and say, you know, let, let, the, uh, let the creators create and, you know, all you have to do is take a look at some of the stuff that ran from on TCM, Turner Classic Movies, and you will realize how rapidly over time Hollywood has either rapidly followed or led some of these social changes. So the moment you start now saying there's a formula, to me it's like, okay, now you're forcing me to play with my little cousin that I, I didn't, you know, I don't really want to be, I mean, that's kind of a crazy analogy, but you're forcing something and it's hard to force people, stuff, stuff on people. Now, where I think there's a huge opportunity for this, that they're, maybe they're playing it up, but it doesn't really sound like it. When they talk about training and when you start talking about people in the crew, start looking at the folks that are in that pipeline of development so quick example, you want to get more diversity amongst the various crew members. I'll go back to something we've talked about over and over from our work with the public housing groups and so forth. There's plenty of HAs in Los Angeles in that area uh, and actually throughout the United States. There's tons of kids that would just actually die to actually get trained in some of the behind the scenes work in filmmaking. Um, you know, gaffers, you know, the lighting, all, all of that stuff that, and those, by the way, if it's a Hollywood production, are generally very well-paid union jobs. I mean, what an incredible pipeline to build. They get exposed, and that could also lead to more of the creative. So, you know, I, I, to, to your point, I see a lot of value, a lot of value in some of that backroom stuff and, and, and finding talent that hasn't been tapped into yet uh, from some of the various communities that don't have the same kind of access that we had as kids, get them into the industry if they like it, and then you kind of build it from there. But this four-story stuff, to your point, you know, I, at the end of the day, it's going to be, do people even watch these award shows? Do they go to the movies anymore? Will they go and, and will they enjoy them at the same level? Or will they enjoy the other ones that didn't get the best picture more? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I agree, you know, with everything you're saying. But then I think of things like Hamilton on Broadway that they then filmed and I watched on Disney+. Plus. And I think, okay, you know, out, half the cast is or more would fit into these ethnic minorities. And I didn't have any difficulty because the casting wasn't done, the casting was done colorblind. The casting was done not taking into consideration whether somebody was straight or gay. The casting was done, you know, and you'd have to ask Lynn manuel Miranda what his thought process was but he was looking for a certain, a certain something, and it was colorblind. It was, uh, had nothing, as far as I know, to do with whether a person was black, white, straight, gay, 
or disabled. And uh, I like that process. So if this leads to more of that, so in other words, we're gonna close our eyes for a second and not say Alexander Hamilton has to be white or Adam Burr has to be white. They have to have somebody that can represent that character. That's fine. You have Black Panther, which was a huge movie and a huge success. But again, the unattended consequences would can very easily be stifling creativity. And let us not forget part of the casting and the process of selecting a crew is about people getting along. These are, you know, when you shoot a movie, when you shoot a commercial, when you do a Broadway production, whatever you're doing, in this case, we're talking movies, there's a lot that goes in, but once the shooting starts, they have a finite timeline. They have to get all this stuff done on these specific days. It has to hit the edit base. Makeup has to be there. Costumes, you know, the lighting has to be right. There are thousands of technical details that have to be taken care of. And it's a high stress environment and people have to be able to work well together. So part of the putting together these crews is they, in, in many cases, they know each other. They've worked together before, they work well together. So to that point, uh, Brooklyn had a point of view, I, I didn't really understand it, but um, as I was saying, you know, uh, the, the idea that you had earlier about starting these people young yeah. and apprenticing them as teenagers so they can see that and get to know each other and get to know these people, because nobody wants to work with a jerk. So if you're an ass, no matter how talented you are in the entertainment business, your career can do this, but at a certain point, it just kind of slopes down and nobody wants to work with you, no matter how talented you are. Okay. And they have to get along. Yeah. Now, I would think most of these people could care less whether somebody's white or black at this point, you know? Um, well, to your point, I, it, 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 that kind of stuff will build resentment. It will build resentment because you, you do. You, it's like a well-tuned orchestra that has to be able to perform extremely well and on time and, and within budget. Uh, and that is a, quite an advanced craft. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how well, by the way, I'm not so certain Lynn Miranda took a colorblind approach. There was one white person in there and it was King George. <laughs> so he made an attempt. He actually made an attempt to go ahead and make sure it was, uh, you know, flip it on your head, which was great. And absolutely take it in terms of looking at different people that can do these different parts and it worked for him. Maybe he should consult a little bit more with some of these folks that are allegedly are running the industry in terms of how to look at some things differently, you know, overall. Um, but again, this four stuff, four stuff, four stuff. I can't believe that. And uh, you know, sometimes I, I wonder what goes on in the heads of some of these folks because I got to believe they're smarter than this related to some of the force things as opposed to figuring out how do you encourage uh, people to be in the industry in a way that kind of builds upon that. And once again, let the people who create, create, because it comes from their heart. It comes from inside their culture. Uh, and they need to be able to uh, express it in the way that is true and uh, to form to their particular story. You know, otherwise, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be looking at a two hour commercial that's got these forced inclusion that's going on where you know that the relationship that you're they're showing doesn't necessarily look real, but who knows? We'll see. I, you know, it is, you, you do understand that it's made with the best of intentions that, or I believe it's made with the best of intentions, but um, race-based decision-making doesn't often turn out good for anybody. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we could say that about an awful lot of things about that's good intentions, but if the results don't really reflect those good intentions, you know, you have to think about it differently. 
and there's yeah. way too many people that are sitting in fancy homes, fancy positions that think they know what the answer is to everything because they think everything is just generated on certain numbers and statistics and everyone in certain groups is going to think the same way. And this is one industry that said before, that's done a yeoman's task at getting people to think differently by letting it naturally happen through the creativity of the people they have. Yeah, it's, 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 there are certainly uh, many powerful people in Hollywood that are, uh, would fit into the underrepresented group, you know, uh, or in entertainment, um, you know, Oprah Winfrey, for one, you know, is the, you know, she, she hits at least two of those categories. Yeah. You know, you've got the guy out of Atlanta that has the big production studio. Uh, what's his name with the glasses? Uh, what? Spike Lee. No, he, well, he's out of New York. I was thinking of uh, his last, it doesn't matter. The point is that, you know, you could turn it on your head and say it demands greater creativity from these people but i worry about this as i said there's that old god darn slippery slope and creativity uh should be able to solve it but by forcing it you kind of as opposed to encouraging it i don't know how you encourage it without setting up like this is only the best picture oscar so to but me you all want the best picture what? I, it you was the best picture. So, best picture, uh, to be nominated as best picture, shouldn't require create uh, criteria based on gender or ethnicity. It should be based on, is it a great movie? Well, there you go. And, uh, and if it can accomplish two things, great. But uh, and, uh, these things always make me crazy because I understand their intent and I'm all for their intent and I think that's great. And I believe that in my heart of hearts. I'm a social liberal and a fiscal conservative. But I worry, I'm a, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg made a work really hard on women's rights about equality. In other words, her focus was not they're a special class, they're the same class as men. So they needed to be treated, ex stop, sorry. Uh, they need to be treated the same as men, not protected. And I, this idea of by creating this criteria, you're creating a protected class. Well, and we've seen that happen time and time again, regardless of those best of intentions. Right. So we'll you know, see. So where's the learning? What have they learned? It feels well, like the same types of solutions over and over again without really taking an honest look at what has worked and what has backfired and what needs to be improved. Yeah, I, I think your point at the beginning about the, you know, the kind of internships and all that stuff and uh, film schools and all of that, I, you know, I, I Maybe it's me. I don't notice the lack of diversity, but I'm a older white guy. So when I watch a movie, it, it's not part of my thought process. I either like it or I don't. Well, that's the problem, Bruce. You make sense. So with that, <laughs> we'll just leave it hanging. <laughs> yeah, you got it, buddy. All right. See you later. Yeah, bye -bye. You got it. Bye.